So here it is. My last cigarette ever. My last cigarette. Last cigarette. This is my last cigarette. Last cigarette. Last cigarette. Remember I said I had one cigarette left? Change my mind. On the day when some triumphant anti bagist crushes under his heel the last cigarette manufactured on the face of the earth, will the world have any reason to grieve? Perhaps to mourn the loss of a cultural institution, a social instrument of beauty, a wand of dreams. To think about the dangers. Yes, everyone knows it's going to cause cancer and all that other stuff. But people don't worry about it but think of how you know if you want to stop one day how much it's going to cost you all of that and what you can do with that money we smoke and cannot quit smoking with full knowledge of and often on some level knowing it is bad for us and that if it were not bad for us the sublime flirting with death's attraction would be lost and it would be much easier to quit. You no longer see a lot of people outside of bars and restaurants smoking. It is few, and when you walk by, they take the cigarette and put it behind them. They're embarrassed about it. Who knows whether, if I'd given up smoking, I should really have become the strong, perfect man I imagined. Perhaps it was this very doubt that bound me to my vice, because life is so much pleasanter if one is able to believe in one's own latent greatness. Do it. Um, there's nothing good that can come out of it. Um, from a health standpoint, from a financial standpoint, um, it's, in my opinion, just not worth it. essence of appropriation, displays in its most abstract form the motive behind all desires to possess something, to own it all. The cigarette allows us, in a symbolic act, to take into ourselves the world around us, the whole landscape that smoking a cigarette accompanies. You can see my best friend in the year. We used to get up on the roof and like talk for hours keep smoking the whole time. Those are the best moments of my life. Joining inside and out, each puff is like total immersion. It baptizes a celebrant with the little flash of renewed sensation, an instantaneous, fleeting body image of the unified moor. I'd smoked for about 30 years and it was a 20 a day habit and many times I'd tried to give up smoking but nothing ever seemed to work. I'd mostly used the patches and the gums and the inhalers but I always went back to smoking. The cigarette is the most imperious, the most engaging, the most demanding, the most loving, the most refined of mistresses, tolerates nothing which is not her and compromises with nothing. It inspires a passion that is absolute, that tastes, exclusive, and if it's ferocious. A lucky, it tastes even better. You know, luckies can be depended on for better taste because they're made of fine, naturally good tasting tobacco. Tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Yes, it's toasted to taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better. Smoking a cigarette may be compared to making a poem, inhaling the hot breath of inspiration letting words on paper burn up in the visible air of a muted elocution, exhaling swirling figures of desire, conduction with gestures of modulating in smoke, a lyric conversation overheard. What a Hollywood film, what big smoking does, is it aims a revolver at a 13-year-old child, and when that child is in his 50s, that drug goes off. I believe they can
The sublime, as distinct from really beautiful, affords a negative pleasure because it is accompanied, as its defining condition, by a moment of pain. It supposes the allure of danger, as well as satisfaction, literally rolled up into one slim ephemeral object. Cigarettes are bad. That is why they are good. Not good, not beautiful, but sublime.